There are a few things I want to show you that you can do to customize your Excel environment that I think you may find helpful. One, up at the top, you have the white text against the dark green background. If you want to find out what other Office themed colors are available, then go ahead and click on the File tab to go backstage. Go down to Options. General is selected by default, so just come down and go over to Personalize your copy of Microsoft Office. Now in this section, it's going to personalize all of Office, not just Excel, otherwise it would have said Excel. So, for example, the office theme is colorful. Ooh, that sounds fun. You can click on the drop-down arrow and, ooh, only a couple of choices here. In any case, if I select white, it's going to update all of Microsoft Office, all the applications you have installed on your computer. Not just going from the dark green in Excel to white with black text against a white background, but also in Word, it'll have, instead of the blue up at the top, but black text against a white background. Now, since we're here, before I go ahead and click OK to see this in action, We've got our username here. Go ahead and replace whatever name you have there with your name because in later training videos, we want to be able to identify who made changes to the workbook. And if you got something else there, well, that's just not doing it for me. Go ahead and update it so we know who made changes. And then with that, let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And there you go. No dark green. The dark green has now been isolated to the File tab and the Share tab here. So File tab for the Backstage. And by the same token, like I said, because it applies to all the Microsoft Office applications, when I open up Microsoft Word, Access, PowerPoint, let's go ahead and go down and right-click to get to the jump list to open up Microsoft Word here. There you go. The dark blue has been isolated to the File tab, the Share tab, instead of the white text against the dark blue background. And so by the same token, because it updates all of the Office applications, if you're in another Office application like Word, then go ahead and click on the File tab to go backstage down to Options, General selected by default, so come down here, and there it is, Office Theme. We can go back to something colorful, and then click Okie Dokie, and then we're back to the default theme, blue for Word, close out, and dark green for Excel. Now, anytime you create a new workbook and you're saving it for the first time, it's going to perform a Save As. So if I come up here and I click on the Save button, it's going to take me backstage, and in the Save As section, it's going to ask me two questions. First off, it's going to start me with, where do you want to save it? Do you want to save it to the PC, to the OneDrive? And if you want to save it to this PC, it gives you a few options here. So you can go ahead and click Browse. When I open up Browse, the default location is going to be the Documents. What if you don't want to save every new workbook you create into the Documents folder? What if the default folder is going to be a folder on your desktop or just your desktop? To go ahead and customize this so you don't have to go, okay, now i got to come over here, select the desktop, so it's on my desktop, and find my folder, exercises, double click on it to save it in there. Forget all that, click cancel, and you can set the default by coming down here to the options, and then come up and select save, and then come down, and we're looking at the default local file location. You can see from the hard drive, which is the C drive, to the users that log in, I'm logged in as training, it's going to be the documents folder. If I'm like, no, I want it to be to my desktop, then go ahead and delete that. And let's type in training to the desktop. And then click OK. Or if on the desktop you have a folder that you always want to save it into, then go ahead and do a backslash, which is the key above the Enter key on the keyboard, and type in the name of the folder on the desktop, like spiffy. If you have something spiffy on the desktop, or if you have a spiffy folder on the desktop, and within that folder, backslash, you may have another folder, it's called Sales. So if you do have that on the desktop and it can see it, it'll be okay with it. But when I click OK, it says, I can't find this directory. You don't have a folder called Spiffy on the desktop, let alone a Sales folder within the Spiffy folder that's not there. So we'll say OK. So we'll come back in here and delete all that and just say OK. Save it to my desktop as the default every time I save my workbook for the first time. And go ahead and click Okie Dokie. So when I come up here and click on Save, it takes me backstage, click Browse, and it goes to the desktop and not the Documents folder. Let me close out of here and click Back. When I click on Save, it goes backstage. When it goes backstage, I get these options, OneDrive or the PC. What if, for the sake of argument, I always want to save it to my computer and not have to go backstage and then click on Browse, which opens up the Save As window, which is an extra click to be able to save it to my computer can go ahead and change and customize the environment so it actually opens up the save window without coming to the backstage first to the save as section. So to do that, let's go to options, go to save, and it's right here. Check, don't show the backstage when opening or saving files. We just want to bypass it completely. So click okie dokie, 
And so when I come up here and click Save, it doesn't go backstage, does it? Automatically opens up the Save As window, so it saves me an extra click. So that bypasses that. And I can just go right here and say, okay, it's on my desktop, it doesn't go backstage. Fabulous. Go ahead and type in a name, click Save, and you got your workbook saved. Now remember, when I closed out of my workbook and we opened it up, anytime we want to, well, begin a new session here, it comes to the startup screen. Well, if you don't want to see the startup screen, but always go right to the blank workbook, then to customize that, just again, backstage, file, go down to options, general selected by default. So come down here to the very bottom and uncheck show the start screen when this application starts. Click okie dokie. So when I close out, double click to open it up. There we go, right to the clean worksheet. Now, that has pros and cons. If you're working on recent files, then you won't be able to get that startup screen where you can click on the recent file. But if you're generally creating new workbooks and you don't need to see the recent files, then go ahead and set it this way. At the very least, you can always come backstage clicking on the File tab, taking a look at what's recent over here by default, and then click on it to open it up. Let's click back to go back to the front stage. And as far as recents go, you can always right-click down below if you have the shortcut pinned to the taskbar. And since I haven't really working in anything of recent, it's not going to have it available in my jump list or for me to pin to the jump list. Let me go backstage here. And what you're seeing here is so old that it's not being listed because I've upgraded from Excel 2013 to Excel 2016 so I can do the training videos. And while we're here, notice that when I hover over one of these, you see this little push pin? This is the recents here. So when I open up other workbooks, the latest that I worked on is up at the top and it pushes the rest of these off the list. So if you always want it to be here, whether you've worked on it recently, so it doesn't get bumped off over time, then go ahead and push it and then notice how it says pinned. And it's pinned up here, so it doesn't matter if you worked on it 10 years ago, it'll always be there and not get bumped off the list with other workbooks that you've been working on recently. It does go down quite a ways, up to 2025. And then if you want to get rid of it so it can just bump off, and not be pinned so it's always available there. Go ahead and click on it and if it wasn't a recent one it'll automatically be removed or if it was recent then it'll just sit there until you open up other recent workbooks and it gets eventually bumped off. Finally if you want to change the default font from Calibri size 11 so whatever cell you select it's always going to be that unless of course you come up here and you change it to something else like Absalom for that cell but you go to another cell and you'll have to change it there as well. So if you have a font that you want as your default for every new workbook that you create for every cell within that workbook and on that worksheet, then go ahead and click on the File tab, go backstage, down to Options, General selected by default, just come down here to the section when creating new workbooks, and the default font is Body Font. Wait a second, it says Calibri here. The reason why it says Body Font is because that's a feature that's used for themes. So if you want to use themes, as we'll talk about in a later training video, it's probably best to leave it as body font because it's using the default font Calibri to be able to update your fonts when you use a heading font and you've got a body font it tries to use complementary fonts so one's not so different than the other so it doesn't blend well in your worksheet so people look at that and go wow what a heading font I can't really focus on the rest of the text within the body of the sheet because the body font is so different than the heading font so it tries to find complementary fonts for headings and the body of the worksheet and so if you're not interested in using themes, or better yet, you want to watch my themes training video before you decide, but it doesn't matter because you can always switch this back for new workbooks if you'd like, then click on the drop down arrow and type in, well, I'm going to do Arial, so I'll type in A-R-I-A, -A, and there it is. Down at the bottom, I can go ahead and select it, and then the font size will do 10, click OK. Then it says I have to close out of the workbook and open it back up for changes to take effect. OK, close out. Don't save it. Double click to open it back up. So any cell that I'm in, there you go, Arial size 10. And to push my point home, like I said, you have to watch my themes training video. But let me click on the drop down arrow and scroll to the top. And notice how we have two different types of fonts. We have the regular fonts down below, and then you have the theme fonts. Now Calibri is the default theme font currently, that if we want to use the themes feature in our workbook, on our worksheets, then we have to have it set to this. And you can see that for the body of the text, it has Calibri, and for the headings, Calibri Light. So something for the headings, if you choose to use a heading style for like a section of your worksheet to say, okay, this is for sales for the Northeast, that could be your heading. 
and then you want something for the body of it that has numbers, not so different fonts, so it's so jarring and it doesn't complement each other. So again, to use theme fonts, you got to use one that has body next to it and headings, and that's what body font was. It was using these as the theme fonts. So when I create a new workbook, the theme fonts feature is not going to work for me as far as the fonts go, and that can be found on the page layout tab, themes. And the elements that make up a theme are colors, fonts, and effects, and the one that we were talking about is fonts. That gets a little bit out of range right now, but at least it's something to think about. So when you watch the themes training video, you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about. But for right now, to use the themes font at all, to say, okay, I want to change everything within my workbook with the heading that has Calibri Light, now um, Cambria, because what's on top is going to be for your heading font, your heading styles, and what's at the bottom is going to be for everything else that's not in a heading style. And notice how they're closely related. They're not too jarring. You don't have something that's so ridiculous up here that it takes your focus away that you can't really focus on the rest of the font. That's not in heading style. In any case, it doesn't work here for me. I can select it, and I go back to the Home tab, and it's still Arial size 10 for that cell. Because if I had my workbook selected for the default every time I create a new one for the body font, then it would automatically come up here and choose the body here, Calibri. So when I come over here and click on the page layout and I want to update every cell that has that Calibri applied to it, the body font, then I can go ahead and click on fonts and you can see Cambri and Calibri if I choose like, well, Corbel, Corbel, select that, go back to the home tab, there it is. Now it's Corbel. It updates everything within my worksheet and I don't have to go ahead and click and drag to select, well, as much as I can or control A to select the entire worksheet to change it, but it automatically updates it in one click. Now that's getting a bit deep here for starting level one, but I'll refer back to this training video when you're like, hey, I can't use the theme fonts on the page layout tab. Why is it not working for fonts? Well, it's either one of two things. Either you got your default font to set to something that's not the body font every time you create a new workbook that selects, well, it's going to be Calibri to start with, or you've got a range of cells that you just went ahead and say, hey, don't use a theme font, use a regular font. But I digress. Let's stop it right here to keep it simple and show you how you can go ahead and change the default for your workbooks, the type of font and font size every time you create a new workbook. And mine's going to be Arial, size 10.